Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Scotch and Scripts and Sticks. I'm here at Stick Cigars in Somerville, and I'm here with Matt. What's up, man? What's up, Good David? to see you. Good to see you, brother. So I have Matt on here because we're doing another version of Push Success Stories, and Matt just went through my Push program that started in January, wrapped up in February. And since then, all I see is Matt out there taking action. I mean, Matt, tell me, how many listings have you gotten so far this month? Um, I've had, I have three. Okay. Yep, I have okay. three. Gotcha. Uh, I had another one, but it kind of skated through. People get cold feet, and that's what happened. But well, listen, that's the whole business we're in. We have to have yeah. a buffer. We got to know that there's going to be a fallout rate. So sure. that happens. Mm -hmm. You got three in a month. I know people that didn't get three in a year. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I'll be honest, like, I have to get super creative because I'm trying to do everything, you know, I'm being smart about it. I'm trying right. to be budget friendly and right. trying to be tactical in how I'm doing things. And so a lot of my stuff is like organic and just thinking outside of the box. Well, I love the video you did. And you guys, <laughs> thank I'm, I'm you. Gonna, I'm going to tag you, the video you. in this podcast episode. You got to watch this guy. Thank you. <laughs> took a shower in a suit. <laughs> like when I tell you outrageous stuff, but that's what gets people's attention. Mm -hmm. And he's showing up. He's doing well. Yeah, yeah. So, that, yeah, that video did very well um, across multiple platforms. I'm still trying to compile numbers and stuff. So we had a few thousand views across multiple platforms. And Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, our open house turnout was phenomenal. We had uh, we had like torrential rainstorms on Saturday. I, yeah. I still had like 35 groups of people come through and then even more on Sunday, which was nicer. So we had almost wow. like 70 groups of people with, um, you know, with uh, private showing scheduled in between as well. So, gotcha. you know, we were... Uh, we were calling highest and best pretty quickly. And you, you're doing, man, hold on. <laughs> Cheer, cheers to you, man. Yeah, cheers yeah. to all that. That's I, awesome, I appreciate man. you, yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, when we first started talking about, about Push, I remember I was actually in Montclair. I was, having, I was meeting with Betty and Lauren and, and Jolie about Speakeasy, and you mm -hmm. called me, and I stepped outside, and we were talking. Yeah. Um, talk to me about what made you decide to actually sign up for Push. Well, I think a lot of it had to do with just what I had going on personally, you know, like I was, you know, doing the entrepreneur thing and uh, wanted to make sure that, you know, I realized I was filling too many cups up. So I needed to trim a bunch of fat out. Right. Um, I, I, I had linked up with you early on yeah. uh, in, my, in my real estate uh, career. Uh, and we've been friends ever since, which is yes, fantastic. And, yes, and, and it's funny, I tell people the story, like David, David talked to me and my broker in a room and that's how we met. Yeah. Like we, we told everybody, everybody in the office knew about it. Nobody else showed up except me and Mike. And this is the result of that. So right. uh, once once I was able to go monk mode a little bit and kind of like really bear down, I had to trim and take care of some personal things. I was like, all right, I want to jumpstart and accelerate my stuff because I've been through some things. I've, I've, I'm, I'm familiar with the business. I've got my reps in. Yeah. Now I'm looking to accept. Like I wanted to, I did it to accelerate Yeah. because I knew where I could improve my business immediately. Okay. And I knew that if I improved on a certain skill set, that it would help me in every facet yeah. of my business. So I, I want to be transparent with people. I mean, you were doing real estate before you took push, so it's mm -hmm. not like you came to me as a brand new agent. No, no, no. I'm in, you, I'm in my third year of the business. Third year. Yeah, yeah, I'm in my third year of the business. Um, I've, I've done close to almost 40 transactions in two years, which is wow. like... I hear a little bit above the normal, so yeah, and I don't like is. saying that stuff because I'm not like well, I'm not it, like a big stat rat. It or anything, is what it is, right? It is what it is. Yeah, that's what I'm learning. It is what it is, yeah. right? And so, so what did you learn and push that really helped you that you didn't do or weren't doing before, or didn't know before taking push that really helped you? I think I think the experience altogether kind of was just real. It, it like culminated a precipice, you know what I mean? Like I felt like I felt like how I wanted to run my business, how I wanted to show up. Yeah. Um, I had a bunch of different ways that I wanted to do it. Push yeah. kind of like organized that for me, and then it took a lot of the scary stuff out because yeah. you know, like there there always is apprehension whenever you're going to do something that you're unfamiliar with, right? Like skydiving, right? I'm standing on the end of the plane and I'm freaking out, but as soon as somebody kicks me out the plane. It's the most exhilarating thing I've ever experienced in my entire life, I like right? That so analogy. that's good. Once uh, that's Will Smith. I'm not gonna take quote on that. So once, uh, <laughs> once I decided to jump, I was like, well, look, if I'm gonna do this, I want to be as efficient as humanly possible. Right. And I want to do it in the right direction. And I've, I, Reiko, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta give her. She's so funny with some of the things she says. I spent comma money on coaching before. That was mm -hmm. not fun because gotcha. that I, I felt like I used to say that I felt like I wasted my money. However, now that time has passed. I feel like I just learned it at the wrong time because oh, I'm leveraging it yes. in different manners now. I got so you. I'm getting the value out of it now. Okay. Right? Whereas 
years ago, I really didn't see it because it wasn't a direct reflection into like, i.e., the most measurable thing we have, your bank account. Your bank so, account, yes. So um, because it didn't immediately reflect into the bank account, I thought that it was an absolute waste. However, now it's like, okay, I'm a little more familiar with how coaching works. I understand yes. that there are the real deal and then there are the pretenders. Right. Um, so it was nice to have somebody that I already knew, like, and trusted that had um, a program that, that, that would do that, I and, love that in an intensive format because I didn't want to do something for six months where we're kind of just doing like repetitive, like, it's not how I learn. Like I wanted to do something quick. Right. I wanted to. I wanted to be intensive. And I honestly, I really wanted to meet another group of like-minded people and see, like, hey, this is. I know my why. I know how hard I have to work and how I have to show up. Yeah. To live how I want to live and provide for how I want to provide. Right. My vision's big. As um, it should be. So, I wanted to see how many other people had the same vision. Yeah. What I'm excited about is that they don't. <laughs> so that's more, that's opportunity more opportunity for me. For you. Yep, it's just more opportunity for me. Yeah, yeah so. like too many people, man. We we talked about this earlier, but so many people are sitting on the sidelines waiting to get motivated. It's about discipline. It's about showing up and putting in the work. And you do that over and over again. And you've connected with some great people like David Gossett. Like they're great people who are plugged in and doing their thing. Sure. But there are a lot of people who aren't. Let me ask you. You said something that Rachel said. You know, spending comma money. <laughs> For anybody who's looking at taking push, and it, it's it's a comma, sure. right? What would you say to them if they're vacillating on, oh, I don't know if I want to <laughs> make that type of investment in me? What would, what would you say to them? That's funny. So uh, I appreciate that question. And I think the best answer I can give you is I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you, the, the people listening, what push costs. I'm going to tell you that David can easily charge more for it. Uh, because of the okay. value that we get. So okay. so, so when I'm looking at spending some money, the way when we talked about, okay, I'm, I look at it like this. I'm investing in myself, right? Yes, you are. Just like if I wanted to improve the value of my home, I might update my bathroom. And that might cost me some comma money, yeah. right? And then at the end, I might make some money back on the, on the, on the other end. Right. So the way I looked at it is if, if I know, like, and trust you, and I've seen results from other folks, right? So you built authority. Yeah. Good. Now my decision is very easy. I'm comfortable spending this amount of money to go and invest in myself. Dude, here's the reality. I have three listings in the same month. I, the commission I make off of that, I paid for it tenfold. So, figure out, you know what, you know, if you're wondering whether you should shit or get off the bottom. Oh, can I say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you, you can definitely say it. <laughs> if you if you're figuring out whether you should shit or get off the pot, my advice is not to do either. My advice is to uh, look within yourself to see if you're truly, truly ready to commit to this lifestyle change. Because once you start applying the, the, the things that David teaches you in a manner that, recipro that resonates with you, and everybody's gonna be different, once it resonates with you and it makes sense, and you take action on that, yeah. it's over. So, so I wanna be clear here. We didn't prep for this. I didn't tell Matt what I'm gonna be asking him. So this question, I, I'm just throwing it out there. Sure. Other than me teaching real estate skills, I like to also work on mindset as well. Yeah. Did you feel that component and push? Did that help you? What we talked about and, sure. and, and mindset and focus? Yeah, I think everybody's response to how mindset's going to be portrayed in their experience through your program is going to it's going to be uh, individualistic, right? So right. Uh, my experience is going to be different than your experience, and sometimes right. people have to take things the same experience over, right? I think you like saying uh, it's not the same man, not the same river. That's right. right. You walk through. I believe so, that. Believe it. So um, the way I look at it is, you know, for me, my mindset shifted in the fashion of well I was able to reinstill a sense of confidence meaning that I understood the back end of the business I understood the administrative work I know what a contract is I understand right. buyer agency agreement listing right. agreements solar panel addendums I'm taking classes understanding septics I'm, I'm familiarizing myself with the game right mm -hmm. I understand the rules now I got to figure out how to play once I can figure out how to play now I can figure out how to dominate nice. so Nice. Once now I'm sharpening my sword and I'm leveling up my speech and I'm combining that with life experiences that I've already had. And, you know, for me, it was like push was the confidence breaker. So like there was that wall to get through to be like, hey, now we have a perfect marrying of mindset, confidence and action. Because if you're not confident in yourself, you're not going to show up. If you're not showing up, you're not going to get the business. So it's like Love you it. have to step. You got to step into your element. Yeah. And I just, you know, best way I can say is just own your shit and just be, be, be you. Set, be set you. the golden standard. Yes. Right. Like if you're a perfect, like I, I, Henrik Lundqvist says, and I love living by this. There's no such thing as business casual. 
Mm. If you told me that, hey, listen, we're doing a show, we're going to do this interview, it's going to be a business casual attire, I'd show up in a suit. Gotcha. I'd take a shower in a suit. Yeah. You understand? Like, we have to portray our value more so than ever now. Now, right? after that settlement, we really And have I don't to even want to get into it because it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's giving me a slippery it's, slope. It's, it's a slippery slope, and I think anybody panicking over that is just silly. You need to reevaluate your own business because you just have to you have a new way to provide your, your value. But That's if, right. if there's anything that you're going to learn from taking push, is like, look, you're going to learn how to talk to people. You're going to learn how to operate scripts. You're going right. to learn how to have a conversation. But most importantly, you're going to learn how to listen, how to shut your mouth. Like, I have a podcast called The Chatterbox. Why? <laughs> because when I was a kid, my grandfather used to say that I was a cacaron. 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 You have a cacaron. Matthew, you Chatterbox. do too much of this. Yeah. Not enough of this. Yeah. So we have to flip that. the we have to flip the uh, flip the script. Okay. So now we have to talk less and we have to listen more. Yeah. And then when you do that, you become the loudest person in the room. Mm. Because when you speak and you deliver it properly, you you move an entire you move an entire room. You become evangelical, influential, all that stuff. I love that, man. Mm-hmm. I love that. And when you said listen and learn how to shut up to me. If that's one skill I say every salesperson needs, it's that. The act of listening. Don't listen to respond. Listen to understand. Uh, and let me, and I don't know if anybody's thinking about this or if even maybe you thought about it, but like, Push didn't just show me value in my business. Push showed me value in how to handle conversation. Love that. Right? So like, my conversations with my wife is better. Yeah. I have a funny story I have to tell you about that. Okay. We're not going to do it on camera. I'm going to okay. tell you a funny right. story right. off right. camera. Right. Right. I have a funny story <laughs> for that. And then... You know, how I talk to my children, how I show up for my own parents, yeah. right? Like somebody told me once, you're a hero last in your hometown. Mm. And that's important to me because I, I live and grew up in the place that I'm operating in now. Yeah. I worked in the place that I'm operating in yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So how do I portray value with this quote unquote new identity, right? Because everybody's just going to judge you based off of who you used to be. Right? So now it's like, how do I show up from not being who I used to be? And how do I show up as the professional real estate expert and local economist of choice that's going to wow you with your ability to be able to sell your home at a premium? Right? Love that. As, as opposed to being, you know, Matt Saparito, the guy from Lake Opaca, New Jersey. Gotcha. Right? And so um, when you show up differently, when you're able to own conversations and you do that in the, in the manner in which you're talking to people who are familiar with you, yeah. you wow them, dude. Their jaw hits the floor and they're like, holy crap, like, they don't even know who you are anymore. That is freaking awesome. I love that. So, man, let me ask you this, man. I, I want to do more of these with you because you're just getting started. Yeah, we're, we're just, getting started. just getting started. And <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to sit down with you in six months and talk about how much your business has exploded. Because one thing you recognize and you mentioned it earlier, a lot of people don't want to work. They don't want to work. They don't want to work. And you do. And you are willing to That's work. That's fine. You a big why. Look, you don't want to work. Don't work. I'll go get that shit. I'll come. I'll come. I'm coming. I'm coming for it. I'll put I'm not trying to like and I'm not trying to look. I think that. The biggest thing that I learned from push is like with your sense of confidence when you're, we're operating a sales industry, okay? Real estate's the only outbound sales industry that exists, right? We don't own the product. No one's giving us a product in order to sell. We gotta go out, we gotta hunt that stuff. We gotta prove our value to somebody else and they have to earn their trust to, to, to perform a, a, a service. Yes. Okay? At a high value, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes. Right? And so if we're not portraying the impactfulness and the importance of that, you're not doing your job. Not doing you're your not job. showing up. And if you're, and you got to have a little bit of arrogance to have that confidence to come across because everybody's going to think that they know what's best for themselves, yeah. but they don't. So you're saying, okay, how can I ask good, good, fulfilling questions to get you to realize, hey, maybe I'm not making the best decision for, or maybe yeah. I should be a little bit more open-minded to how I can potentially sell my home. That's how can exactly I potentially right. do that thing? And that, and that works for every asset. Maybe I should be a little more open-minded in how I should talk to my wife. Maybe I should be a little more open-minded in how I treat my kids. Absolutely. Maybe I should be a little more open-minded in how I show up and talk to my coworkers or whatever it may be. That's right. right? So it's, it's, it's all about how we're showing up. And with that little bit of arrogance, I, I, and, I, and again, I say this in the most humbly way possible, but we have, sure. to, we have to have that chip is if you're not doing it, I'm coming for your business. So you better do it. Because I got people from other areas showing up in my space. So I'm coming for yours. I'm coming. I'm coming. And listen, <laughs> I got two cameras here. Politely. He's coming. <laughs> Politely. He's coming for your business. Just know that, man. And, and when you see me, you still, you still say hi and come on in and yeah. <laughs> all that good stuff. But yeah, that's how you, you got to be a dog, man. I tell people, what kind of shark do you want to be? That's right. You want to be a nurse shark and bottom feed? No. Great or you want to be like me. You want to be a tiger shark. 
and I'm going to enter the ecosystem and I'm going to destroy everything in my space and then I'm going to move on. That's I'm going to balance right. that ecosystem back out and I'm going to move on to another one. All right, so I got one final question for you because this is important for me to know about everybody that I work with. You've had three major wins and you're going to have a lot more wins this year. I believe in celebrating our small wins and our big wins. What do you do to celebrate when you get a listing, when you have a closing? Uh, well, the last one I did, I took the kids out for ice cream. That's fantastic. Uh, I, I'm you a, make them part of that celebration process. Yeah. So I used to be, full transparency, I, I actually used to be a very materialistic person, right? And once I realized, like, none of that stuff matters, Yeah. right? And I woke up, whatever you want to call it, um, I have I have so much more value on the other things, right? So and it's great because it helps my wallet, yeah, it does. Yes, <laughs> and it, it sends does. the right message to my kids too, For sure. to where you're saying, hey, you know what? Us spending time together, you can't put a dollar amount on. That's that. right, right? And I don't even look at money the same way either. It's okay. green, it's just green rectangles. I need a bunch of them so I can trade for some other stuff. Yeah, you're trading that for your time, for experiences, for memories, all right. of that. Right. You want to call? You want to go buy a car? Great. Get a bunch of green rectangles. Yeah. That's it. Once you detach from that, that's when the business comes. But I love that you make your kids part of the celebration because they miss you when you're out on listing appointments, when you're they working know. hard. They oh, understand yeah. that you're not around. But when you can say, hey, we're going to celebrate. Remember when I was gone that night for that meeting? Well, I got that listing. We're going to go celebrate with ice cream. They're going to tell you to get out the house more. Like, go to more meetings. Dad, yeah. I want more ice cream. Like, yeah. they're going to be part of that. I like to keep it two-tiered, right? Because right. we know there's so many hands in the cookie jar in a real estate transaction, which is like a you know, you and sure, I both know is sure. a massive pain in the ass to manage. So yeah. having your back end and your team and your resources like lined up is beyond critical. Yeah. Um, so I like to celebrate twice. I like to celebrate when you get the listing agreement signed because then you're like, hey, mm -hmm. I did it. The sword was sharp enough. Yep. We came in, we dominated our space, we earned the business. Yep. Then when we close. Cause I gotta close them four times. I gotta close at the inspection. I gotta close at the appraisal. I gotta close at the table, and I gotta yep. close during. So I have to close multiple times. So then, when we finally close, check in hand, then we do a little bit bigger. So, so. I got a question. Yeah. Why are you not celebrating getting it under contract? That's another celebration point, right? So I do celebrate getting it under contract. Okay. So how I celebrate getting under contract is I put that energy back into my business. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll I'll go out and I'll create like a celebratory and you can do this you can do this as well. I don't care if you steal my stuff. You can I create a celebratory podcast uh, uh, postcard yeah. that says, "Hey, we just wanted to let you know we're excited that we're under contract." And I hand it out to all the neighbors in the area. And now they're curious. Why? Well, because when one goes up, two or three more pop up. I love that. I love that. I'm going to give you one piece of advice that I did with the postcard and then we'll wrap this up. Please. I always had a pipeline of expired and for sale by owners. Mm. I sent that postcard to them because what it's showing them is that I'm staying in touch mm -hmm. and I'm doing what they would want an agent to do. That's get the property under contract. So I would send that postcard to them, not to the neighbors, directly to people in my pipeline that I knew wanted to sell. Mm -hmm. And they constantly kept getting these postcards. Damn, Matt sold another one. Dave sold another one. Mm -hmm. I need to talk to this guy. Like when they're ready and you stay top of mind like that, they're going to reach out. I love that. And then you trip, you, you double down, right? So you do it physically yep. and then you do it digitally, do right? Digitally. And so now everybody's going to see it. That social media is that big megaphone. and That's exactly it. And that's it. Dude, I'm looking forward to seeing more videos. Do you taking showers in your suits or any other I have, crazy I have, shit you so come up with? I will, I will, I'll, give, I'll give you a teaser. Give I, I, I have another, I have a listing that's coming up. Uh, it's a big piece of property. So there's some outdoor stuff going on. And nice. so... Uh, that's my alley right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful, beautiful piece of property. Um, we are, I'm going to, I'm going to do shoot some content next week on that property before we go public with it. And, uh, and it's going to be cool. I have some, some cool stuff planned out. So I'm excited. Well, let me wrap up this by saying this, man. I am so happy hey. that our paths cross. Very grateful to have you in my life. I love your energy. I'm inspired by you. And oh, I'm man. excited to see what this year has in store for you, man. I so appreciate that so much. Thank you for being here. Hey, thank you for having cheers. me. I really appreciate it. Guys, thank you for watching another episode of Scotch Scripts. And sticks at sticks in Somerville with sticks <laughs> here with Matt chopping it up. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to add a link so you can watch the video we're talking about with him taking a shower. You will love it. You will love it. Trust me on that. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here. Have a good rest of your day. All right, <laughs> my man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. That's easy. Super easy.